Is it true? I, this is one of the first things I heard about you, Kidian. I heard that like every other pro-level Danish player was a member of a Facebook group that was just called like "fuck Kadian" or something mental like that, or like "don't ever play with Kadian." Like that was actually like, the name of the group. Like you were the you, you were like that thing where Ronald Reagan once said that it'd be great if aliens invaded because it would unite all the peoples of Earth. Like you're the only thing that could you know unite like all you're the disparate the Danish alien. scene. Yes. Also, the yeah. other problem is that he was kind of forced into it because Shroud actually stepped down to go pro on PUBG, right? Here's the thing, though, Launders. The part I'm confused about <laughs> is when you made that point that, um, well, I mean, listen, PUBG is the ideal world for him, isn't it? Because, like, 999 people lose that game. So, you know, <laughs> you have to realize it, half the people lose the game in Counter-Strike, and he was losing all the time. So the odds just didn't even make any sense, did they? Now... Just if you can't beat them, go to a game where even more people are losers. <laughs> this is less flame on you. Isn't it? <laughs> Listen, that wasn't a point or anything. It was just pure flame, wasn't it? It was flame that backed into flame that led to some flame. And you were like, what, is there a point coming at any point? No, no, no point. Usual host, Thorin. I mean, obviously. <laughs> That'd be pretty next level. No, what would be so sick is I once heard this thing you know, about how... If you want to work less, you try and find every element of your job that you can outsource. Mate, imagine if there was just like episode 42 was like, I'm your host, Najit Sahid. I'm here <laughs> as Thorin's assistant host, and we'll be hosting this week's episode. <laughs> and I'm imagine just if you could just uh, clone yeah. yourself and have a second person just staying at home hosting your shows at all times. Y you mean go down what we call the Shocks route, where Shocks famously, <laughs> when he was in Epsilon, where it was just like him, Kiyoshima, and then a bunch of people you've never heard of, right? When he was in this team, he actually did say to some of us, he goes... Sometimes I wish I could just clone myself and play all the positions. <laughs> and he was team game leader, by the way. So when you're owning game leader, says that, first of all, not the best attitude. You know, you've got to kind of work with what you've got. And uh, funnily enough, though, bizarrely, MSL never told me the same thing. <laughs> must just be a good guy, though. That's what I meant. Just, just must be a good guy. That's the only implication I was carrying. There. Different, Mate, different styles of leadership, Doc. Speaking of which, dude. <laughs> all right, right, real question quickly, Moses. Before, this is still the intro, by the way, everyone. Right, real question, Moses. If a team of five MSLs played, how well do you think they'd do? Because here's the thing, they'd be smart. They'd definitely be smart. Oh, God. Uh, uh, top uh, 25? Top 20? Okay, not bad. Not bad. Yeah, ESWC, not bad. then. He could, he could get out of the first group at ESWC, <laughs> maybe, on a good day. Yeah, they could get yeah. out of the groups. Uh, yeah. maybe, maybe a nice, fortunate group. One of the old yeah. school groups where there was, like, two teams, like, from, like, one from Africa and, like, one from, like, India. <laughs> Immediately into Africa, of Team course. Himself. First, <laughs> yeah. he didn't even say a country. He just says he didn't even have to. He just goes any, just the continent of Africa. Just yeah. the basically, of <laughs> if he's playing versus five people from Africa, five people from India, I think he's got a chance. We're not going to listen. We're not going to promise anything can happen, but he's got a chance, right? Okay, here's an interesting point. I've noticed a lot of teams have done the evolution we talked about that Astralis did. Uh, a few months ago, which is that they don't do the full force buy with like the pistol and armor and a smoke or a flash. They do the force buy where it's actually just a, a it's just a save basically. You just do a save, but you buy whichever your favorite OP pistol is. You don't buy <laughs> armor usually. One of you buys armor or the other doesn't, and you just you're saving, but you just have a good gun. Now in that scenario, everyone is actually playing what I think are very efficient strats. Like you you do two people yeah. pushed up, you do a peek, and then the other person peeks out. So it makes the CZ seem OP as fuck, right? You can get, you yeah. can always get a couple of kills. It feels like, yeah. It also, I mean, I, th I just, I just think it's hilarious. <laughs> it just shows how broken the fucking Tech Nine was for so long. And oh, yeah. as soon as it gets a little bit of a nerf, like everyone just switches right over to the CZ. It's just like, <laughs> oh. the Tech is horrible now. It was genius though, because the way they nerfed it, Moe Snake, is they said, no, 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 I've buffed it. I've made it so it's more accurate. And you were like, more accurate? Standing, in your when brain, you're, doing you're going, don't even yeah. do, you, still. Go, you go, wait yeah. a minute, in my brain, more accurate? That must be better. And then when you use it, you go, oh, wait a minute, the whole point of this gun was to move. That's yeah. genius. You actually nerfed it, but you made every idiot like, well, there's no point complaining about it. It's better, right? It's almost better <laughs> for CTs to have it now. If a CT could have a Tech 9 now, it's not, it's not bad now. Put it this way, we've had a couple of months with this now, right? We've had a couple of tournaments. I haven't seen a single clip where someone like a, a proper pro player on T side runs a, runs around and whatever firing technique gets like three really big tech nine kills. That, that hasn't happened. No. It's actually, but they balanced the gun. I mean, they haven't. I mean, I, I, by the way, that's when Valve's, is Valve listening? Uh, yeah, they've balanced the gun now. Really good job. Privately, 
no one's using it also when they showed like the like they had a, a cutout of each person's E-League? like yes e-league had a cutout of each person's like glamour shots that they do at the beginning of the season yeah. for who, who was making each prediction but bizarrely your glamour shot made you look like you were the tallest of all the people there meanwhile dan was like it doesn't even I mean, look like that does it it's not even a joke about his head now but he was just his entire body was shrunk like disproportionately small why was that why not just make it uniform uh i don't know maybe they're maybe they're making up for for all the other photoshops they've they've, they've literally photoshopped me into the egg in game of thrones the dragon egg <laughs> Three so yeah. you know sometimes <laughs> they have to be a little kind i, I did like Dance that one though thing. where it doesn't even look yeah. like like I don't even know who that is when Dan's picture know. comes up in his glamour shop. It's shop to fuck, isn't it? <laughs> it's unreal. It's mad. I like the one where they just photoshopped everyone, like because because you and Richard obviously have the same like bald head, but with with beard look, where they just photoshopped like a bald head onto a uh, Samuel's head. Yeah, that that's looked not bad. amazing. Like it was so disturbing. Ah, uh, that was um, that was really fucking awkward. I hope he never goes bald. He told me he told me he's starting to uh, he sees it coming in the in the future. So I'm worried for him a little bit. Okay, well maybe they made you bigger on that graphic to represent the fact that in the casting world you have only grown bigger and acquired strength and position. You know, and now obviously you can demand you know more representation. You you get more of the show. So you're on top now, right? Yeah, that was in my negotiations for the season. I was like, listen, now that I'm a bigger deal than seasons one and two, I yeah. demand that in all of the graphics, I'm, I'm taller than Dan. Uh, I want to be the largest photograph in every graphic. No more eggs. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that leads directly into my question. And I was going to say, Zeus, like, let's just say, I know you did this at New York, but let's just say hypothetically you guys qualified for E-League and you're playing phase in the quarterfinals. You're, you're in like envious spot. How do, you, how do you ban against this team? Because they've got four maps that are 100% win rates. They've got Barrage, Inferno, Cash, Overpass that are 100% they haven't lost on them yet. I know that this is a very limited. I think they've only played 14 maps on land total. Um, so th those four maps on land, they're undefeated. Train and Nuke, they haven't won yet. They're 0-2 and 0-1. And but, I mean, is that is that what you're going for? But, like, how do you how do you ban against this team that just has so many maps that they seem very, very good on at the moment, even early that, on? That, that's complicated. Like, if I'm envious, let's be honest, their map pool isn't great, so I'm kind of fucked, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's true like they're gonna have oh, to try this is completely go. fucked because they actually yeah, have their maps cobblestone which is the ban of face so <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah no, right no he means if you that, were in that position though what yeah, would you if, do if like, it's going to be like quick. they ban cobblestone which is a comfortable map for us i don't think we'd necessarily try to throw a curveball at them and try to go for a nuke or anything like that because right now we trust in our squad but if like we learned the best thing for us right now i'm gonna say right is being st stomped on the way we're in the finals, we saw so many mistakes on that and what we can improve, right? They're not going to be, what are they going to be able to improve on? So I don't think it changes that much in the sense for the veto. You just have to keep a lookout on what they're stabilizing on. Like, even though they have 100% success rate on Overpass, I don't see it as one of their most solid maps of all time, right? Like, sure. stats can be misleading yeah, in that sense. I thought that was a bit shaky, yeah. Well, after the tournament, right? Yanko. I, there was some sort of an interview, and I remember it was Yanko <clears throat> made like a t a tweet where he made some comment about like a false buy or something, and Smiths replied to it and was and literally said without any sort of joke in his tone, like "What do you mean? No, we just didn't. We we, we just didn't force buy because when we lost all the pistol rounds to SK, we knew we weren't going to do pistols for that event." And you're thinking like, w w "Wait a minute, w what do you that mean?" That can't be. That can't be real. That, that was real. And if you look at all the tournaments There's... since then, Moses, they have fully force bought. So against that Cloud9, uh, against Cloud9 at the E-League Premier, they force bought all day long and ruined an entire map. So they, they, they literally don't understand that that factor helped them win Malmo. They think that that was just, in fact, they think the opposite, Moses. They think that was like they were operating in a really tough situation. I bet in their minds, are you ready? Are you going to go into their minds now, Sam? This is how fucked French CS is. In their minds, they were like, we even won an event without... Any weapon on the force buy, we had to just use CZ in out pa pa. We go out again. The next thing I'm like, hey Kenny, you got to kill him with the op. You have no more guns. Like in their mind, it was harder for them to do real saves. <laughs> That's what That's you sound like, Samuel, when you speak French. By the way, That's, That's what you sound fire, like. Isn't it? I don't fire. know what you're talking about, my friend. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I have noticed the thing about MSL. Okay, as a leader. 
the reason why he can it's easy to make fun of him sometimes is, he, is he's a very stubborn leader like he wants to play this specific map and it doesn't matter that you know he's picking mirage into phase and mirage is arguably phase's best map and the team they're probably the best in the world on he does it but you know he still gets a lot of rounds on it so the reason why i actually respect him is it's a very hard approach to take but his approach that he takes is basically excellence he's like right these are the maps we're going to be good on and if we win, it will be because we win on these maps. You know we're going to pick these maps. You know we're going to play these maps. You can prepare for us on these maps, but we're going to be playing these maps. And if we win, it will be because we execute and because players do their job. And so while that can be a very hard style to make work because people have advanced knowledge of what you're going to do, sometimes if it's like phase, they might have a better team. Yeah, you got to give him credit. He does make it work to a degree. So if he can win doing that, a lot of the credit will go to him, I think. He's chosen to play the game on hard mode. Because, I mean, to me, it's like Kerrigan has got, like, the easy mode way, where in G2 are trying to get that easy mode way, where it's just like you have just explosive, really hard-to-predict rounds where somebody goes apeshit, a la Guardian or Olaf or Nico or whatever, right, where they just take over a map, and that's just what they do, like Kenny and Apex can do, right? Like, that, to me, is playing the game on easy mode, especially today with how many analysts are in play and how quickly they are um, managing to just collect data on your team. So every time you try and come up with a strategy, every time you try and execute something new, you know that within an hour, every other top tier team has an analyst who's looking through that with a fine tooth comb figuring out exactly how to counter it right and so that's the game within a game right now with all these in game leaders is how do I come up with something new that fits my team that everybody can believe in and that will work and it's like what I have to hold on to that for like the perfect moment to use it because if I use it early that's it game's up and they're going to figure out how to counter it within an hour so you know that's so it's like MSL has chosen to just do this without like he's trying to run a dungeon right now ass naked so. Like, Glaive, I want to ask you something. Right? Yeah. He, I, listen, I know it's really cool, like a movie where there's a storyline and someone puts some, like, next level, you know, like, you know, in a movie where there'll be some, like, bank heist. And at the end, you're like, how did they get away? And then when they show, you know, they did some, like, really complicated shit and that's, like, they tricked someone and used misdirection. Right? Even though it's a really cool storyline that I am Sydney, Carrigan was like, right, well, we're losing this cobblestone game in the group stage. So just stop trying on T side and then we'll trick them into picking it. Like, that's in a movie, that's a wicked storyline. <laughs> I still don't believe it to this day like do you actually buy that no uh yeah I, <laughs> it sounds awesome both, but both, come yeah, on no both we, remember, no. remember we talked okay. on stage ah that's copy pick remember in the before the semi final yeah i don't remember, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, remember so I don't remember but what does it take for a tactical team like like an like an astralis or you know kerrigan if, if you want to actually have a team that can do a seven map pool is that actually a difficult thing to obtain for for a team that wants to play a tactical style? Like, would it is it easier for Kerrigan with Phase than it is for you know Astralis and Glaive, since you know Kerrigan can rely a little bit more on skill, doesn't have to be as detailed. I mean, if you think back to Navi with their cash, they've always had sure. that. Yeah. They've never had a seven map pool, but it, doesn't that give <coughs> your opponents like this massive advantage, knowing that they don't even have to worry about that map? Like, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be a beneficial if you go into a tournament and you just practice the shit out of Kabul? to some degree and you can bring it out as a surprise pick is that actually a difficult thing to pull off that's very difficult because let's say what you do in practice uh, first of all you play all other teams so they know you practice couple and uh, nowadays everybody has seven people on the server one coach and one analyzer <laughs> that's a thing i want to take up because that's annoying that one guy is analyzing enemies game in a practice game i think that's yeah. too much. but that's okay. another point uh, recording demos yeah, recording demos or whatever, it's really annoying. But the point is that for you to... check up in this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you practice couple a lot and want to bring out a surprise, you know it's going to be a couple. You have to be very, very comfortable in your mat, especially in the best of one. Uh, let's say major. You have yeah. like a few weeks to practice for the major. You know they're not going to be called because what I always feel like, if a team doesn't play a map that much, you always want to abuse it. They, they don't have the um, official experience how to adapt mid-round because what you okay. don't adapt in practice that much. The enemies are not adapting, you're not adapting, you're just playing your own game. In this esports world, it can seem like everyone's against you, but I've always got the Skrilluminati, my Patreon community, riding with me. And it is thanks to the support of the following people, this video and all of them on my channel are made possible. Matt Pugnaccio Rakula, Ahmed Haju, Frisky, Tosh, Jensen Gore, Animosity, Toucan, Tobias Berners-Gorney, 
If you've ever watched my videos, you know now I'm going to give a massive shout out to Jerky's Minion, the main man. Do you want to suggest a topic or a guest for my content? You want teasers? Find out who the upcoming interview guests are. Maybe you want to ask me a question. I tend to answer them at length in my video AMA. Do you want to take part in one of those donated discussions where we talk about what you're interested in esports? Well, if any of these perks or more appeal to you, put your money where your mouth is. Join the Skulluminati today. Where? In the description box below is a Patreon link.